Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover some ways to improve performance of VP Studio, as well as cover a couple of areas that people have been having problems with, such as the sublevels, attaching objects, and the availability of different kinds of free maps. So let's get started. After you've been doing this virtual production stuff for a little bit, you're probably going to notice that some maps have just too much going on and your frame rate suffers to the point where you can't get a good recording even at 24 hertz. There are some ways to fix this. You'll notice in the latest version of VP Studio there's a foreground and a background, a mat, and a video pass for each camera. And there's also two cameras. Now not everybody has two cameras, and having all these passes enabled for two can slow things down because in some cases they still render. This brings up an important problem of performance. If you're not using all of these passes, unfortunately they still render, and I haven't fixed that yet. I think there may be some tools to do that in Unreal 4.26, so I'm holding off until the next release to try and actually do a good fix. In the meantime, what you should do is bring up the Composure Comp window here and turn off any passes that you're not actually using. So in this case, I'm only using camera two and I'm not using any of the passes for camera one. In this case, I am using the foreground pass for something later on. Uh, if you're not using it, you can turn that off as well. The other important thing for performance and for reducing jitter is to make sure that you're running at a fixed frame rate and that you're always hitting it no matter what. You'll see here I'm running about 24 hertz. If I was to actually start the uh, virtual production project up, it would lock down at exactly 24 hertz. Now here I'm synced up with my camera, but the other way you can do that is this. You just open up project settings and under general, you can scroll down till you reach the frame rate portion. Now you can see right now I've got this linked up to my camera's frame rate through my uh, video capture card. If you don't happen to have a card that supports that, you can just check used fixed frame rate here and set the frame rate that you want there. And it'll stay bang on the frame rate you requested. Another thing I wanted to make sure to show you that's been tripping some people up is uh, how to deal with the sublevels that this is made out of. A while back, to make it easier to move in your own content, I put all the virtual production stuff in a sublevel. That made it possible to just bring in your own level and then attach the sublevel to it and you're all ready to go. But some people were having trouble working with the sublevels. So the most important thing is this little button right here. Uh, you see it, see it says VP Demo Map. If you had built your own map, it would probably have the name of your own map. Anytime you want to add something to the virtual production part of the level, like say new mats or new cameras or new trackers, you have to be in the sublevel that I'm using to hold all the virtual production pieces. So you just click here and select VP Core 2 camera, and now you're ready to go. Anything you drag and drop into the level will be in this sublevel now. The other thing that some people were having trouble with was uh, the idea of attaching something. When you drop in something like a Vive puck or a mat or whatever, you need to usually attach it to the talent mark or to something else. And the way that's done is you just say click on it, you right click, and there's an attach to here. And for most things, they're going to attach the talent mark. Uh, yeah, so you can just select it. This one's already been attached to the talent mark, so it's grayed out. It's very important when you're working with the virtual production projects to make sure that this is set correctly when you start dragging things into the level. If you're going to be adding new parts to the virtual production piece, like cameras and mats and such, you want this to be on the VP Core map. If you're adding stuff to your actual scene, you want to be on what they call the persistent level, which will have the name of your own map. It's important to get this right because when you drag something in, it will land on either the main map or the sublevel based on what you have selected here. If you're adding things like furniture or other set pieces, you want it to be in your main map. If you're adding things like cameras and mats and so forth, you want it into the virtual production map. The other thing people ask me about a lot is why I'm using such a boring sample level in VP Studio. Why don't I uh, distribute some of the fancier levels that I've used in uh, other demos? Uh, the answer to that is pretty simple. It's copyrights and terms of use on some of these models. 
while almost all the models I've used are available free from Epic's online store, which you can see on the screen right now, uh, unfortunately they have a, a licensing agreement that says I can use them, I can have them in a compiled and ready to run project, I can make videos with them, but the one thing I can't do is give them to you. You have to come to the marketplace and get them yourself. So it's pretty simple. You go into the Epic Launcher, you click on Marketplace, and you just start browsing through the through the list of things. There's ways of sort, sorting and showing them. Uh, and if you want to see just free stuff, you can go up to this thing tab that says Free, and it'll show you all the different free things. And a lot of the free stuff is quite good. Every month, Epic adds more free stuff. Some of it is good, is free only for the month. That means you have to be there at the, sometime during the month and quote unquote purchase it for free, and then you have it forever. If you miss it during that month, there's no way to get it later. Then they also add things that are forever free, and those kind of show up at random at various times. So it's always good to go looking through the free section to see what you can get. As I said, most of my VP Studio demos have been done with this free content. The other place you can find some free content here in the Epic Launcher is on the Learn tab. And I'm just going to show you this because everybody keeps asking, where did I get those studios? And that's right here. You scroll down on the Learn tab and there's this example called Virtual Studio. You just click on it. That's the one that had these fancy TV studios that I used in some of my earlier demos and I'll probably be using again. And uh, again, you just take basically do create project. It downloads the project to your computer and you can use it to build your own sets. When you get these free models from the store, they show up in the library section under Unreal Engine in the Epic Launcher. And I'll just like scroll down my library. You can see there's an awful lot of free stuff in here. All this is free content that I've gotten over about the last year and a half. So you can get quite a lot of really useful content if you keep checking back at the beginning of every month and grabbing everything that's free. Thanks for watching.